The Walking Dead has been part of our pop culture for over a decade now, with not just the main series, but several other ones that have okay, uh, spun out, out of the main one. And now Free League has created the role-playing game in the Walking Dead universe. They've been very kind to send me a copy, and I have been very studious to actually read it, so I can tell you if this game is actually going to be worth the amount of money that you have to spend to get your hands on it. Welcome to the GMS Magazine RPG Review Videos. This game, I have to say, is the second time that I record this review because the first time, and off he goes again, uh, the first time I don't think I was being all that fair with the experience that it is to play The Walking Dead. Let me tell you a little bit about the game itself. Um, firstly, the book looks very cool, all right, as in very, very cool. The map is lovely. The table of content makes it very clear as to what you're going to be getting and it's concise enough. You have absolutely everything that you're going to need to play the game in under 200 pages, just over 150, which is brilliant. As we are used to um, an awful lot of uh, free league books, they have a two column uh, setup, uh, which reads very clearly and very nicely. I did the unbooking of these videos of this book, so I'm not going to go too deeply into what it looks like or anything at all like that, uh, but it is very nice. As you can imagine, this game follows the um, Year Zero engine modified. The way that they've modified it is mostly by the way that stress is going to work. Um, whereas in other games, from Free League, you get an awful lot of stress points and you accumulate the number of dice that you're going to roll depending on how many stress points. Um, and depending on how many um, stresses you get one in, then you're going to get an effect or another. Here, you only need to get a stress in one of those dice. That's it. It's a lot easier to get them as well. And once you do that, you have messed up. And if you have messed up, you are in danger, in real danger. Anything else? Well, it works exactly the same. You have your pool of D6s. Anything that is a 6 is a success. Anything that is a 1 gets discarded. If you don't get any 6s, that's fine. You didn't mess up or anything. You just don't achieve what you wanted to do. And then you can force your rolls. Your rolls, if you force them, the 1s get discarded. The 6s get discarded. You roll the other dice. And if you roll any more ones, then you get stress points and you can mess up. That's roughly how, how it works. Now, the reason I was unfair to this game when I reviewed it for the first time is because I felt that the lethality was a bit too high. And uh, it was going to be very difficult to get to grips with the characters and to develop them. Well, that still is true. But the reason I've changed this is because what I've noticed is that it depends on who you play with and how you direct the game, as in GM it, not railroad it it's going to have a massive impact as to the, what experience you're going to get with the other players. Character creation is easy. Usually with the Year Zero engine, it doesn't take a lot, but in this particular case, is very easy. Also, it helps because they have given us an awful lot of archetypes that we can use anytime. Criminal, doctor, homemaker, farmer, the key, the law enforcer, the nobody, the outcast, the politician. 
the preacher, the soldier, the scientist. There, there is plenty here. And yeah, they're not all that there could be, but you can create a few more. But they are simple to generate because they have also simplified the character sheet, which I will show you now. Like they did with other games, they have uh, changed, you know, to have strength, agility, wits and empathy and the skills that are associated with each one of these abilities, these attributes, is already down there. So it's a lot easier to see that with Forbidden Lands, for instance, that you have them all on the one side and it was harder to combine them all. But here you can do it very, very quickly and very easily. They have also simplified the damage point. You can be unharmed, bruised, battered or broken. Now, broken doesn't mean dead. It means very severely incapacitated. Does that make things harder? Well, yeah, but that's kind of the point. This is a very, very dangerous world. And also to follow with the series itself, coming back from broken to battered, it's not that hard. You just need a few minutes to patch yourself up a little bit and then you will be able to move again and try to escape. It won't be a big fight point, but you will be able to survive. Some of the things that this game has included that I really like are things like anchors and triggers. So um, anchors are literally what keeps you sane, what keeps you anchored to the world, what gives you a reason to live. And it can be a mission, it can be a person. Um, more often than not, it's going to be a person, somebody that you can talk with to chill out and release the stress. These are, you know, the kind of the conversations that you see in the movie that they all look a little bit happier and you look at them and think, how can they be happy if they are surrounded by lethal zombies? Doesn't make sense. Well, that's how it makes sense. They just give each other support. And I think that is a very, very important part of this game. And I like it. And then you have your drive, which is that what I was explaining about the reason to, to leave, to keep going, to keep moving on. That works an awful lot and very, very well indeed. Everything else is what you would expect from any role-playing game. You have your combat, you have your opposed roles, you have explanations on how to use vehicles, how to use them as weapons as well, which is very nice, just in case, you know, you want to run against a horde of zombies. Talking about zombies, although they are going to be the dumb zombies that we'll see in the series, they are going to be very lethal. Because when you mess up, you're going to roll on a table, on a list, the two D6s. I counted, and I think it's about, it's over a 30% of the chances that you will get bitten by one of those zombies. And unless you receive the medical care that we all know one has to receive once bitten by a zombie, your character will be gone in a number of hours. That is over a 30% of the times. So, is this very lethal? Yes. Is this game going to take away some opportunity to develop your character? Yes. But again, that's going to depend on you on how you play it. And I will explain why I say that in just a minute. Um, using your skills is just as easy as I survived of rolling your dice and getting uh, your sixes. Uh, combat and healing is also very well described and no issue whatsoever. But then, we get to another part of the book that I have really enjoyed, Home and Away. This is chapter six. And this, my friends, this is where things begin to take a better shape for me. Because this is all about creating your haven. How are you going to do it? What kind of haven is it going to be? Who are you going to include in it? Who are you not going to include in it? I like that a lot because the series goes around it. And whereas I thought at the beginning that having a campaign in this game was going to be very difficult, actually it doesn't have to be. Because either developing or defending your haven 
can be and can give you plenty of opportunities for exploration. This game is based around season five of the show. And around that season, we found that there were also an awful lot of politicking within the group itself. We saw that in season three very, very well. So there's no reason not to go into that. And I haven't given enough thought as to how well this could go, how interesting it could be, it could become, how having um, the wolves attacking slowly and eroding the defences of the haven could give enough scope for an adventure where you have to divide your force and even make it episodic where in one gaming season you use some characters who are going to try and get rid of the wolves and in another uh, gaming session you play different characters that are staying in the haven trying to defend it and maintain it and what happens here can bleed into what happens in the other game in session with the other players like for instance if the wolves have stolen some sort of um, supplies are those supplies that these could find later on or that the wolves can actually use against the first number of players that is that kind of parallel gaming that when i was reading it i thought this could work this could work what if you have the governor and instead of fighting him full front you actually use some of the player characters to go and infiltrate their ranks and see if they can destabilize from the inside or with alpha that kind of parallel playing i think this game would be very very interesting to play with and the other thing that i think renders itself very well to the, to do it is the um, alertness you know the kind of the, the challenge um, spin the wheel that, that you go that comes with it uh, at least with the starter set um, the danger goes from one to six with one being the occasional zombie that you can see in the forest and you can usually just get around and forget that they exist or just kill it easily to six when you are bang on in the middle of a horde using that during the times when i have played this game has served incredibly well to raise the tension within the game i like that a lot because then is when you begin to see how one player would like to do one thing the other player would like to do something else are they going to go different ways are they going to argue about it how is that going to play the game still plays on selfishness quite a lot and I think this is the most challenging part to kind of instigate and to maintain or manage throughout the adventures what do I mean with this each one is going to have a different drive so for instance if your drive is to maintain your diabetic child alive finding insulin is going to be your main goal whenever you go out so if you have to go somewhere where you get food but you can get insulin as well your character may want to go for the insulin even though the other ones want to go for food that is going to create some sort of conflict internal conflict which is understandable it's not a conflict for the sake of conflict it's a conflict for the sake of the life of my child for my drive how to manage that can be a very very interesting thing that would be absolutely brilliant but of course that is going to be perhaps the most challenging part of this game overall i have really enjoyed running the few games of the walking that i have run and different groups have given me completely different experiences if a player is used to just kicking the door and going in the likelihood is that their character is going to die a lot more often because you're going to find a lot more surprises if you are too cautious then you may find that things around you are happening quicker than you can move and that is not a good thing ever finding that balance is nice and it is very very important making sure that for instance 
if you kill somebody who's got some information that you need, not getting that information is going to bring an obstacle later on. So there are many ways to mess up in this game. It's not just a matter of rolling a one in a stress die. You can mess up in different ways that can contribute to the story. And something else that it encourages that I do like is this out of nowhere solutions. You know, these Diaz Ex Machina sort of situations where suddenly it's like, oh my God, I have 20 zombies and no weapons. What am I going to do? Roll your die, you get a success. You get attacked by a zombie, you manage to stop them with, the, with your arm and you realize that the knife that killed the person is still in there. You get the chance to get it out, kill that zombie, run away, for instance. It's just a way to put it. This one goes very well in that manner. The solo rules help a lot to create those adventures, as well as creating your own diary. If you wanted to play, you know, Michonne before they were found, I think that would be incredible. It would work very, very well indeed. So overall, for a short book of 164 pages, The Walking Dead is offering absolutely everything you need, and then some, to play a very, very unique experience that I have enjoyed massively. If on top of that, you're a fan of the series and you understand the ethos of what goes on even better because you will be able to draw on the experiences of watching the series and bring them in effortlessly, which is a triumph. So if you want a relatively complex game to run that mimics perfectly the series The Walking Dead is certainly certainly for you. I have enjoyed it and I very much look forward to keep enjoying it with my friends as soon as I possibly can. If you have already played this game I would love to hear what you have to say but until the next time thank you so much for being with me today and I will talk to you very very soon. Take care. Thank you.